Right, so in the next few examples, we're going to reverse the process um, that we've used with the normal distribution up to this point. Up to this point, um, we were using the normal distribution to find um, an area or a probability for a given boundary condition. So, for example, there x is greater than 20 um, or whatever. In these examples, we'll be reversing that. We'll be given a probability. So given the area of the part of the normal distribution that we're interested in and reversing it to find what boundary condition provides that area. Um, and that's a pretty straightforward thing uh, to do on the calculator. There's one little thing that you need to be aware of, but let's take a look here. So A. <clears throat> find the value of the constant A such that the probability that Z is less than A equals 0.611. So the variable provided is z, so that's telling me that I'm using the standard normal distribution, which has got a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. As with all normal distribution questions, I think it's really helpful to draw a little sketch. Just doesn't have to be a work of art, but just to have a picture of what we're looking for here. So I know this is the standard normal distribution, so it'll have a mean of zero, standard deviation of one. Total area underneath that curve is one. So for it to be less than 0 0.7611, that's going to be up there somewhere because this one is symmetrical about the mean. And I know that the area that I'm looking for there will have an area of 0 0.7611 and I want to find A. So on my calculator so on my calculator I need to go to 7 for the normal distribution and this time I'm going to select 3, the inverse normal. Uh, that automatically takes me to the standard normal, uh, normal distribution. So I can see standard deviation 1, middle of 0. And what I want to type in is the area of 0 0.7611. And that will give me a boundary A of 0 0.71. So the probability that Z is less than 0.71 is going to be 0.7611. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Flying the ointment comes uh, when, just like in part B here, they're looking for a probability that is greater than rather than less than. Because the way that the uh, figures are stored in your calculator is as a less than value. In the same way, uh, if you think back to cumulative frequency in GCSE, um, the cumulative frequency curve would tell you um, a less than value rather than a greater than value. So, so long as you spot that and remember that, you're okay. So if I want um, the value of A greater than 0.01, What I'm looking for is that. So mu is zero, standard deviation is one. But what my calculator, what I need to put in my calculator is this area here, which is one minus 0 0.01. I can do that in my head that that is um, 0.99 but they're not always as straightforward as that and you can just type into your calculator the subtraction in the area so you don't need to work it out separately and then retype it in still got the same uh, values of mean and standard deviation so the value of A there is going to be 2.3 
So the probability that A is greater than 2.33 is 0 0.01. Part C. Uh, probability that A is greater than, so this is another greater than. So it's going to be that side. Um, this area 0 0.0287. So I'm interested in this one. Well, I'm not interested, but this is what the calculator needs. It's going to be the 1 minus 0 0.287. So on my calculator, 1 minus 0 0.0287 is going to be 1.9. So A equals 1.9. And part D. So you may, may sort of worry you a little bit that you don't seem to be showing any workings out, but your workings out are your diagram. So as long as you know it's clear what you're doing. Uh, so for this one, we're back to less than. And it's a small value, so it's going to be this side of the um, mean. And I'm interested in that area being 0 0.0170. So that's going to be minus 2.12. So there we are. So the only thing you need to really be mindful of is the situation where you are working with um, a greater than.